Hi, this is Martha Moody back again. If you would, please refer to your lecture notes on page, page 6. Um, there are some exponents that I would like you to try working these problems. Um, when you've tried working these problems, um, you can check on page 7 if you want to and check your answers. Or you can go ahead and resume the video and I will have an explanation of these problems when you um, click back on and resume. So if you want to now, um, hit the pause button. And when you pick back up, I'll explain these problems to you. So the answers to the exponents um, on trying to not have any negative exponents. So problem number one is x to the power of 1. So x has a positive exponent. We leave it where it is. y has a negative exponent. So we're going to want to move it from the bottom to the top. So our answer is going to be x, y to the 11th power um, over a 1. When we have a denominator of 1, we typically don't even list it, so we just write our answer as x, y to the 11. If you wanted to have the exponent of 1 there for the x, you may. It's not necessary. Either way is acceptable. Problem number 2, we look at the base of x. It has a negative exponent. We're going to want to take it to the bottom. y has a negative exponent, so we're going to want to move it to the top. So our answer is going to look like y to the 11th over x to the first, or simply an x. Problem number three. On this one, we have a negative four. The exponent of it is actually a one. The exponent of the x is a negative one. So if we look at the four, it has, a it has an exponent of one. It's a positive number. We leave it where it is. The x, however, has an exponent which is negative one. We're going to move it to the bottom. The y has a positive exponent. We leave it where it is. So our answer looks like negative four over x to the first power, y to the 11. Problem number four, two to the minus 11th power. The base is two. It has a negative exponent. So we're going to take it from the top to the bottom and it becomes 1 over 2 to the 11. Again, we need that 1 on the top for a placeholder, making it a fraction. Problem number 5, 4 has a negative exponent. We're going to move it. x has a negative exponent. We need to move it. y has a positive exponent. We leave it where it is. This leaves us nothing left on top, so again, we need that placeholder of 1. Our final answer would be 1 over 4 to the second power times x to the third power times y to the third power. If you want to, you can multiply the 4 squared out, making it 4 times 4, or 16. It is not necessary for my class, but if you want to, that's perfectly fine. Going on to look at number 6. x has a negative exponent. We're going to move it to the bottom. y has an exponent of 1. We leave it where it is, so it becomes 1 over x to the second y. Again, the placeholder of 1 is on top. Problem 7, x has a negative exponent. We move it to the bottom. y has a negative exponent. We move it to the top. Our answer is y squared over x squared. The next thing we're going to look at on page 8 um, is the pro are the properties of exponents. The first one that we're going to look at is called the product rule. All of these rules that we're going to look at um, make it just a little bit easier for us and quicker for us to work some of these types of problems. It is totally not necessary. We could actually work all of these problems with just what we know about um, exponents currently. So the first rule, the product rule, to make our life a little bit easier is if x is any real number, which it means it can be anything, and m and n are integers, then if we have x to the power of n times x to the power of n, our answer is going to be that same base of x, and we're going to add the two exponents together. So in this case, it would be m plus n. So our first example is x to the third times x. That second x has an exponent of 1, so that means our answer is going to be x to the power of 3 plus 1, or x to the power of 4. Example number 1 below there is x to the third times x to the second. Using this rule, it would say that we add the 3 and 2 together, since the bases are both x's, and our answer would be x to the fifth power. Using what we know about exponents, x to the third is 3x's multiplied, and x to the second would be 2x's multiplied. If we went back and counted all of those up, there are five of them there. But using the product rule makes things a little bit quicker than writing out all those x's and then counting them back again. We go to example two, is x times x to the fifth. 
that first x is x to the first, and making it times um, the x to the fifth, we add the 1 and 5 together, and we get an answer of x to the sixth. Problem number three. This is also true for numbers, um, just as it is for variables. So 2 to the third power times 2 to the fifth power means that base is 2. The base is the same, so our answer is going to have that same base of 2, and we're going to add the exponents together, the 3 and 5, and get an 8. So our answer would be 2 to the power of 8. If we wanted to, we could write out all those 2s and then go back and count them, and there would be 8 of them. Problem number four, we have a grouping this time, which is x plus y. There's one of that first group, there's five of the second group. We add the one and the five together, and we get six of those groups. This rule is also true for negative exponents. So what the first one we have is x to the fourth times x to the minus fifth times x to the seventh. We have the same base in all of those, so our answer is going to that, be that base of x. We add the 4 plus negative 5 plus 7 together, and we get a 6, so x to the power of 6. Problem number 2 is identical, except for the third x has an exponent of negative 7. We still add the 4, the negative 5, and the negative 7 together, and this time we get x to the power of negative 8. This would be fine for using homework answers. What I prefer for the test or the practice test, however, is to get rid of that negative exponent, making our answer be 1 over x to the power of 8. Example number 3 goes ahead and combines several things together. So we have these two expressions here that you see. What I'm going to do is take the ones that are in the yellow, which are the numbers, so we're going to multiply their coefficients together. Negative 3 times 2 is a negative 6. Then I'm going to match up the x's, so over here on the right-hand side, um, in the blue boxes, um, I have x to the fourth times x to the minus fifth, and in the box down here on the right, you can see where I've added the four plus negative five together and gotten x with an exponent of negative one. We do the, the same thing for the y's that are in the green. Um, disregard the first four that's over here with that y, it should be highlighted in blue instead. So we combine the y to the minus 3 and the y to the minus 6 together, and we get y to the minus 9th. Um, as I go, went ahead and combined those on the right-hand side over there, where I had them in yellow and then the blue and then the green, that's not necessary for you to do. Um, if you want to, you certainly may, or you can do that in your head if you prefer. Um, doing it in your head makes it a little bit faster. So the final answer is going to be negative 6, x to the negative first power, y to the minus ninth power. Um, again, that would be fine for homework. What I'd like to see on your test and practice test is to leave the negative 6 on top since its exponent is a 1, and to move the x to the bottom because it has a negative exponent, and move the y to the bottom because it has a negative exponent, making your final answer be negative 6 over x to the first, y to the ninth power. The quotient rule um, on this example is if x is a non-zero real number and m and n again are integers, the definition um, of x over m, or x to the m power of n, excuse me, divided by x to the power of n is the answer of that same base, x, and we take m minus n. So we're going to subtract the exponent on the bottom from the one on top, regardless of what it is. So 5 to the third power divided by 5 to the, I'm sorry, 5 to the, x to the fifth power divided by x to the third power, got it right finally, is going to be x to the power of 5 minus 3 or x to the power of 2. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and write all 5x's on top, write all 3x's on the bottom. I would cancel out three pairs of them and only have two left. But again, that's a lot faster if I use this rule, which says I subtract the exponent on the bottom from the one on the top. The next example is x to the 10th divided by x to the second power. So I take the 10 minus 2, subtracting the exponent on the bottom from the one on top, and I get x to the power of 8. Um, it's also true whenever the exponent on the bottom is larger than the one on top, the n is greater than the m, you sub can subtract it going the other way and leave them on the bottom. That's optional. It's not in your textbook. I would, pr um, I would recommend that you use the rule that's in the textbook. I, most students prefer that. Um, so the example on this one is x to the second power divided by x to the tenth, which is x to the 2 minus 10 or x to the minus 
minus 8, which is 1 over x of the 8. At this point, I'm going to stop again and continue back on the next page.